All right, Tsukami. First, thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. What was it like growing up in West Hartford, Connecticut? It was very, very, like, slow. Uh-huh. Uh, not really much to do. That's why, like, I would usually just draw all days because there's just a lack of anything to do, like, there, really, besides, like, hang out with your friends, go to the mall. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, not so much... Not so many things for, like, chasing your dreams, you know what I mean? It's more yeah. like you you go to school, graduate, maybe go to college, and come back home and get a job in the same town. Yeah. It's like I've noticed that a lot of people out there were, like, uh, people that have just lived there for, like, really long periods of time. Like, generations yeah. almost, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like I always knew, like, that just wasn't for me. It just never felt right. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, I like that. Uh, where I grew up for a majority of my childhood was this place called Coal City, Illinois. Yeah. Super small. I'm talking like 5,000 people small. Damn. Same thing. Like, it would be a thing where people's grandparents, grandparents grew up there and it was generations and all this. Like, yeah. most people who I went to high school with, like, never left that kind of, like, 10-mile radius. It's interesting, so. No, yeah, for sure. I agree. I feel like we could relate there. Yeah. Um, how was your experience at Conard High School? Uh, it was, it was cool. Like being in, being in high school in Connecticut is like, it was weird. Cause there's so many different like groups and cliques and stuff like that. Like you could kind of just you could be like a skater kid or you could be a fucking jock and be playing like football and mm-hmm. stuff or just be to yourself. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'll do whatever. There's like smoker groups and shit, like mm-hmm. just stuff like that. So it was very like, uh, is diverse the word you would use for that? Like yeah. something like that. Yeah. Like with uh, as far as high school, it was mm-hmm. fire. Can you tell me about Mrs. Ellis? Whoa, damn! <laughs> <laughs> that was my art teacher in twelfth grade, Miss Ellis. Hell yeah, she was fire. She was she was very very fire. She would uh, she pushed me to like, just go hardy. I wasn't like as good as I am now at drawing, but she must have seen something in me back then to where it was like, uh. If I would do something and she noticed that I was half assing, she'd be like, nah, go back and do it again. I know yeah. you're just half assing it because you know how to draw. Mm. You could just doodle whatever and it'll be fine. But like, no, go back and do it again. Mm. You know what I mean? I like that. And, uh, but yeah, she was, she was fire. Great, great art teacher in yeah. 12th grade for sure. Um, hopefully she's watching this at some point. No, for real. Shout out to Miss Ellis, though. So at what age did you first start like drawing and creating art? Um, when. As far back as I could remember, like, first grade. Like, I've been just, like, drawing and doodling and stuff like that since I was literally, like, as far back as I could, like, remember, literally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's just something I've loved to do in my free time. And then, like, I grew up and then I got to put this to use. You yeah. know what I mean? I got to do something. Mm. Like, I don't want to be, like, doing the janitor thing forever i gotta figure something out yeah with what i have i'd imagine that west hartford doesn't have like a a thriving uh creative scene was it weird being a creative and coming up in this place but like i'd imagine you didn't have a lot of peers that were doing the same thing as you no yeah it uh until i got into high school but before that yeah there was i don't feel like there's anything like for creatives in connecticut unless i just didn't know about it Mm -hmm. you know and i was just like hidden in my shell like you know what i mean but Mm. Uh, not until high school there was nothing so it made me feel like this is useless because yeah. like I said like everybody just goes to college comes back home gets a normal job like what am I going to everybody else is going to college but what am I going to do with drawing yeah like you always hear about the starving artist mm-hmm. like so I'm thinking of that I'm like damn I'm not going to be able to do anything <laughs> with my art you know they what I'm saying so it's yeah. like it almost feels like you're just screwed so mm-hmm. I guess I just I don't know I just like shot for it. Yeah. Like, screw it. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, that's important though, especially in those small towns and shit to like, you know, just leaving in general or trying anything creative is already a step, but, but I like that. Yeah. It's hard. All right, John, can you explain what is going on in this photo? Oh Lord. Oh, <laughs> that's so embarrassing. <laughs> that had to be on Halloween. I see Eli's leg right there on the right. Eli was stitched. And I was a vampire, bro. 
What year was this? Do you know what year this picture was in? No idea. Bro, my mom and my dad haven't had those two cars since I was in, like, fourth grade. <laughs> That's, like, insane. Where did y'all find this at? Uh, the internet. Golly. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Jesus Christ. What were you dressed up as? Vampire? Vampire. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vampire for yeah. sure. Wow. I like that. Well, yikes. I have not seen that picture in a minute. <laughs> Crazy. So can you tell me why your nickname growing up was Munchie? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so if I'm not mistaken, see, my parents would know this best, but if I'm not mistaken, my parents or my grandfather... He said I look like this like munchy chi monkey thing. I don't know what it is. What it's is like that? some like some like hairy monkey or something, mm. like like a cartoon from back in the day or something. Okay. And then he just thought I looked like that when I was born and then he just they <laughs> ran with it. Like my dad calls me that like to this day. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard my dad say like John. Interesting. Like my dad's always just called me Munch Munchy my whole entire life. It's like crazy as hell. That's hilarious. Isn't that wild? That's wild. No matter how old I get. Yeah. Like, it's just like, you know. Did you really get fired for eating chocolate? Yes. I know that's why they fired me. Can you tell me about that? About that? So. Where was it, first off? Munson's Chocolate in the mall. West Farms Mall back in, like, 20, 2013, 14 ish if I can remember back. I, I just had to get a job. Like, you know what I mean? I got out of high school and I wasn't doing shit, really. Mm -hmm. So I had to find something to do. So I applied at, like, every store in the mall. And they called me back and they actually gave me a chance. And towards, once I figured out, like, what I wanted to do as far as, like, clothes and stuff, I just started, like, slacking off. I'd be in that bitch, like, eating hella chocolate and shit like yeah. that. I know they were pissed off. They'd probably look at the cameras and see me just <laughs> munching my fat ass away like all day and shit like that. And they're probably like, we got to get this fucking guy up out of here. He's wilding out. He's eating the product. This shit's crazy. Yeah, I remember one day I walked in the back and Diane, that was my manager's name. She literally looked at me. She's like, she's like, yeah. She was like, well, you, you got to go. <laughs> she was just like, you got to go. So I just like, you know, got fired. That's like the nicest, like most civil firing ever. It's like, yeah, gang, you got to go. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, Man. shout out Diane. No, shout out to Diane for real. <laughs> um, and then tell me about the West Hartford Town Hall. Town Hall. That's where I was a janitor at. Mm -hmm. I was a, a janitor at the West Hartford Town Hall for like four years, I think, ish. Mm -hmm. Before I like started doing clothes and stuff like that full time. But uh, I went through like a two year after I lost my job at Munson's. I think I just like tried to. I just was kind of like lost because it's like after high school, you know, I don't know what the hell to do because I didn't go to college. Yeah. So like that already sets me back like mm -hmm. 15 steps from everyone else that's going to college and doing this shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm just having to like figure shit out and I'm just sitting home. I think I was like I went through a phase where I just didn't want to do shit for like two years. And, like, I know my parents were, like, pissed. Like, I remember my dad came in my room one day. He, like, knocked the door. He was like, you need to get a job and go do something. But it's, like, in my head, I'm, like, lost. Like, I don't know what the hell to do. Because, like I said, the art thing felt like, like, you can't do anything with this. You're going to be on the street of the New York. Artist, yeah. yeah, on the street of New York drawing mm -hmm. those pictures you always see people doing, like, yeah. hungry as hell trying to get it. And it's never yeah. going to get anywhere. You know what I mean? But then the... The floor I worked on had like a graphic designing studio. Okay. I don't remember the room number, but they had like paper, markers, rulers, like everything you needed to just lock it and draw. That's amazing. And I would take the first 30 minutes of work and literally just, I had pages at my house I could show you, like of me just writing the words to Kami and then yeah. finding out the star, I'm the first star boy I ever made, like mm. at my job before work. And like, I was just in there grinding, trying to figure it out, like anything. Yeah. And I was like, one day I'm like, let's, I'm going to just start uploading my clothes online again. Yeah. That actually runs right into my next question. So when did you first start Tsukami and like, where did the name come from? Um, Tsukami started back in 20, damn, 2013 or 14. I can't remember which year exactly, but it was on my birthday. Mm. Darian, Chris, I think Jay and me were all just like at my house, just chilling for my birthday, like smoking, mm -hmm. do what you normally do for yeah. your birthday and yeah. shit. And I was in my garage with Darian and Chris, and I was like, I think Darian asked me, what are you going to call your brand? And then I mm. thought in my head, I'm over here just, like, trying to think as quick as possible. And there's a character from Naruto called Kasame. Mm. He's a shark. 
And then I was like, I don't know what, why, but like I just took those the, and s- like swapped the K and the S, and I was yeah. like Sukami. I was like Sukami. Yeah. Like I just said it like instantly. Yeah. I said the word Sukami, and it's been that since 2013 when mm-hmm. I was doing like that Naruto style clothes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? And then the two years happened where I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. It's too much. Mm-hmm. Too much. I didn't understand shipping. I didn't understand like anything. Like yeah. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then it ca- almost like fell right back into my lap. Yeah. Like it was kind of crazy. I was like, what are the odds that the place that I'm working at has a drawing studio? Perfect. And I just start doodling stars yeah. and Sukami and yeah. now it's we're here. No, that's perfect. That's like the most ideal thing to just be there. No, yeah, yeah. Random it's so room. weird. It was yeah. like and I didn't even I didn't even notice it at first. Like I was I was going up there and I didn't know that was a room. And then like two weeks after I started working there, mm-hmm. my boss was like, you keep forgetting this one room next to the closet. And I'm like, what room are you talking about? Mm. And then I found it. I was like, oh, fuck. Yes. Yeah. Like I'm, this is this is a good place to be. I'm right going to be hanging out over here. <laughs> um, so what did it feel like when you first saw Young Thug wearing your clothes in 2018? That was wild. I remember I'm in bed that night, randomly wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom. My son just told me to check my phone, Mm -hmm. and I looked. And then I had a message from Zoe Dupree, Mm -hmm. who is, I think, a stylist for YSL or just Doug. I I don't know. I don't want to say what he does wrong, but he's a stylist. And he DM'd me. He was like, yo, go check Thug's snap. But I didn't have a Snapchat at the time, but somebody had already DM'd it to me. Mm -hmm. I don't even know how they knew who I was because it was so small. I had, like, 400 followers, like, super-duper small. And then... I see the picture of Thug with his, like, with his chains and then the bear. And I was like, no way. And yeah. then I think the next day, like, Vito, shout out to Vito and, and Zoe Dupree and all them. Like, all the YSL dudes, they were putting on for me crazy back in uh, 2019, 2018, mm-hmm. I think it was. Like, crazy. Like, Thug was rocking my shit, like, insane mm-hmm. amounts of time and shit. But... Yeah. He sent me more pictures, and those are the pictures you see on my Instagram, like, mm. all the way back in the bottom of, like, 2018. Mm. It was just, I think it was just luck. Because I have no idea how someone could, like, find me out of all the people on Instagram. I had, like, 300 followers. I have no idea. Mm-hmm. And I was, like, just throwing a dart at a board. Because, like, you know how you get a DM and people are like, oh, I do this, 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 and this. You don't believe it? But I'm so hungry, I'm like whatever if it doesn't work it doesn't work yeah and then when it happened i'm like there is no way yeah like there's no way yeah it was insane yeah. and Crazy. he was on fire at that point too yeah so and then in 2019 you ended up moving from west hartford to chicago what was your thought process like why did you want to move to chicago more opportunity mm-hmm. because like i said connecticut is kind of small and there's people out there doing stuff don't get me wrong like you got people out there doing their thing like uh, Brent and uh, Lonnie and Subi K and all those dudes like that. But I feel like as far as growth, there's only so much you can grow in Connecticut because there's not that many people interested in, like, the same thing. Everybody's kind of, like, scattered. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have New York, yeah, but I I didn't really want to have to keep going back and forth. And then we met – I met Sam through this chat, Mm -hmm. and then he – he moved to Chicago, and then he was like, you should come out here because there's a lot of shit going on out here. And that's when we started doing pop-ups because I'm, like, mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to take this serious, I need to do something that's going to put me in a position where I'm going to be uncomfortable and want to mm-hmm. work harder. Because yeah. I felt like in Connecticut, I, there was only so much I could have done. Like, I thought of so much crazy stuff when I came out here versus mm-hmm. in Connecticut because you can see more. Yeah. Like, you get inspired. Even when, like, Big A brought me here, I was mm-hmm. like, and I was, like, so motivated and inspired. Yeah. I was like, this is, like, insane. Because mm-hmm. when I was a janitor, I didn't think I was going to be able to do stuff like this no. ever in my entire life. Yeah. Like, never. Yeah. And I'll tell you what. If you talked to me when I was 2013 at the chocolate store and you were like, you'd be doing this, maybe you would have said I know, but I don't think so. Not mm-hmm. like this. Because it happened so quick. And even just, like, being in Chicago, just, like, walking down the street, you could find inspiration. Just, like, no, architecture, literally. the buildings, the people, like... Yeah, we went to that fabric store for the first time. Me and Big A went to Fisherman's. Oh, yeah. yeah Insane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, when we went there for the first time, I literally... I didn't even understand how many fabrics there were in the world. <laughs> but, like, when we went in there, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, they have everything you could imagine. I'm thinking of new stuff mm-hmm. just being here yeah. for, like, a week. 
You know? Like, I love that. Can you tell me about the Hollands Boy YouTube channel? Hollands Boy. Is that my YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. The one where I play Pokemon, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I was <laughs> when I was younger, because I still play Pokemon to this day. Mm-hmm. Like, I used to want to be a Pokemon YouTuber so bad. Like, just a YouTuber. Like, back in the day, too. Yeah. This is, like, in 2008, 2009. Oh, yeah. So, it's, like, the first year I got into high school, and I was, like, I want to just be a YouTuber. And then my camera broke or something. I was like, no, nah, I'm not doing this. Yeah. It's too much. I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm doing something else. Yeah. But, yeah, I used to I used to make Pokemon YouTube videos. Yeah. You had the foresight, though, man. I uh, I found that channel. I was going through it. All these videos are from 09. I'm like, damn. Like, yeah, I was, I was. Not many people in 09 were like, hey, let me do some shit on YouTube. Like, right? Like, trying to put Pokemon Wi-Fi battles up and stuff. And then I feel real. like people are doing that right now crazy. Yeah. Like, John. Can you explain what is going on in this photo? No. Oh. Oh, damn. That's a legendary picture right there. So this day right here is actually the day me and Big A pulled up on Juice and Scheme downtown at the Waldorf. Mm -hmm. And that whole suitcase, everything you see right there is literally closed for Juice and Scheme. Like, we just went there and dripped them the fuck down. Like it was such a, it was such a crazy experience, and I'm actually glad that happened. Rest in peace, the goat juice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And thank you to Scheme for even allowing me to do something like that. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. insane. I just came out to Chicago, and two, three months later, I'm able to give someone of Juice's stature clothes. It's like yeah. insane, insane. And he actually rocked a couple of the things that I was like. I was so, like, happy because it felt like somebody, like, huge noticed me for mm-hmm. once, you know? And uh, this is actually because I was making his merch as well on the side. Mm-hmm. But that was, like, this day was legendary. Me and Big A trooped it downtown in a big body. <laughs> Went up to the, like, the top floor and then fucking we just opened the thing. And I remember there was this one red plushie and Scheme. Scheme was like, nah, this is mine. The juice grab. He's like, nah, this is mine. Like, you know what I mean? It was like some cool shit. And yeah. it felt so good to me because I'm like, this is fucking juice world. Like, yeah. This man does not have to pay attention to shit I do. Mm-hmm. Not not at all. He could not give a fuck and walk past and nothing would happen. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that he fucked with myself is definitely like amazing. Yeah. No, that's beautiful. I mean, you know? that's just talent recognizing talent though. Like, So how has your involvement in the NFT space been so far? It's been awesome. NFTs are so fun. Mm -hmm. Like, it was so cool to me last year in February when I first found out about them. And I was, like, I was so obsessed with how, like, rare and, like, unobtainable it seemed at the time. Mm -hmm. Because, like, last year, crypto was having a big boom and everything, but a lot of people were scared to get on, like, MetaMask. Like, I don't think last year there was Coinbase Wallet and all these, like, other wallets you could do NFTs on and stuff like that. Before, it was, like, Mm -hmm. you had to hop on MetaMask and send money. Mm-hmm. into the void where people think it goes and just do it but i love it i love it because it, it just it just fits my art it's like cryptic almost mm-hmm. and then how many collections do you have you have three or two two okay cool i have like two i have the heart boy is one and then the other one is just like star boys my art just a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff from the beginning though yeah so i've been just doing this for like a year and i noticed in some of your nfts you kind of have like uh kind of references to like like i saw a chocolate one and then i was doing this i was like oh that's probably because of that and yeah i saw uh yeah. the janitor one the star too. boy yeah the star yeah. boys are like i tried to throw in like little parts of my life into it so certain mm-hmm. ones were more special than other ones but nobody knows yeah like the janitor one is the job that got me here mm-hmm. chocolate store i got fired like it's just like certain pieces it's just like it's not cool yeah. it's not small nobody knows until now mm-hmm. can you tell me about beachland park oh lord <laughs> beachland park <laughs> I used to go play basketball there. The pool was there. Uh, Beachland was, like, one of those places where in the summertime, like, everybody would just go to the pool. Like, all the kids and shit. Like, we would all just meet up there, like, every single day. I remember back then it was me. When I used to go to Beachland, like, a lot, it was me, Trey, Eli, and Mookie. These kids that we grew up with, like, that lived around us. We used to go to Beachland, like, every single day, like, in the summertime to just go swim and try to like talk to girls and like mm-hmm. young young nigga shit like, yeah. so just dumb stuff but yeah it's a it's a park in west Hartford. everybody knows about that shit that's mm-hmm. so funny 
How did you know about that? I, I, I found your That's MySpace so page. I, I went deep on you. Yeah, man. You found my MySpace page? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that shit's still on the internet. Yeah. No way. I'm telling you, you got to figure that out. There's a lot of stuff on there, too. Oh, my. Yo. <laughs> um. Wow. Anyways. So, in, <coughs> er, in early 2021, Tsukami and Lenny did the collaboration. Yeah. How was that experience for you? That was amazing. That was like one of the most fun things I think I've gotten to do since coming out here, uh, working with Cole. And then we like Cole had the box built out mm -hmm. and we had like Jordan do the shoot and everything like that. Like it was so fire, like such uh, like I love how Cole's been doing this. Like you don't need the craziest things to mm -hmm. make something look cool. Yeah. Like we literally literally had a box made and then just filled it in and then made it look like some fire shit. Yeah. Like, it was so, so, so far. We made a chair. Mm -hmm. That was crazy, too. I yeah. didn't think we were going to be able to do that. Yeah. That chair is wild. No, them chairs are dope. They turned out really good. For sure. For sure. Cole's, Cole is like a god, bro. Love Cole. <laughs> shout out to Cole. <laughs> nah, definitely shout out to Cole. Shout we out would, to Cole. We would not be the here. Cole. Facts. <laughs> so, sometime this summer, you were going to be releasing your Pain Part 2 clothing collection. Yes. Um, what can your supporters expect from that? Just good clothes. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, the boom bap chapeau. Like all the Tsukami you want. The fitted hats, the work jackets, the like good screen prints, Bart stuff. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot. A lot of stuff for that. We've been working on that like every day, I feel like. Me, Nick, Ben, and all the Mac guys like every single day for the past month or two. Mm -hmm. So like we've been, we've been locked in on it. But like just good stuff again. Mm -hmm. The stuff I want to like actually drop. My last question for you. Where do you see yourself in five years? Hmm. In five years? Where I see myself or where I want to be? Take it however you wish. Where I want to be is still doing clothes, but on a much bigger level, like a huge, huge level. I want to start getting into, like, investing, buying land, mm -hmm. like, building buildings and like working on I, I want to do much more than just make clothes like I want to make a video game one day maybe a cartoon all types of stuff I want to design cars yeah. houses I want to do like art exhibits museums like those really really crazy museums museums that you see around like the MCA and stuff like that I want to do like stuff like that like Murakami and like Ye and all these dudes are mm -hmm. doing you know what I'm saying I, I feel like that'd be crazy like that time when Virgil came out here and did the the Louis Vuitton pop up mm -hmm. and everything yeah. in the MCA like that was like a like that was like a moment in Chicago like I remember everybody going down to Randolph and standing inside the mm -hmm. the like orange building and everything I still mm -hmm. have a brick from that at my crib nice. the orange Virgil building me and Big A went to the MCA mm -hmm. it seemed like the Murakami stuff they had there it was just like that's what I want to do mm -hmm. I want to be doing like galleries I want to have my art like everywhere Tsukami everywhere that's where I want to go in five years mm -hmm. you know just be doing everything possible I can to like stay a step ahead. You know what I'm saying? 